Hello everyone. Good evening. I am Dr. Vidhu Varsha. Today we will discuss congenital cataract. Okay. So cataract, it is nothing but the opacity of the lens. How this opacity occurs? It occurs due to some disturbance in the normal growth of the lens. It occurs due to disturbance in the normal growth of the lens. When this disturbance occurs before the birth. So when this disturbance in the growth of lens occurs before the birth it results in congenital cataract so before we go into the congenital cataract proper we will see the structure of the lens so the structure of the lens consists of lens capsule second anterior epithelium this one third lens fibers This anterior epithelial cells elongate to form the lens fibers. This lens fibers are composed of nucleus and cortex. Okay, this nucleus forms the central part and it contains the oldest fiber. So starting with the embryonic nucleus, it is the oldest and the innermost part of the lens. It corresponds to the lens up to third month of gestation. Next is the fetal nucleus that is surrounding the embryonic nucleus. It corresponds to the lens from third month of gestation till the birth. From third month of gestation till birth. Next is the infantile nucleus. It corresponds to the lens fibers from birth till the puberty. Next is the adult nucleus. So this adult nucleus corresponds to the lens fibers that are formed from the puberty till the rest of the life ok next is the cortex it is a peripheral part which comprises of youngest lens fibers these are the parts of the lens in congenital cataract this both fetal and the embryonic nucleus growth is affected which results in the opacity leading to a congenital cataract ok next we will see the types of congenital cataract okay starting with congenital capsular cataract this is further in turn divided into anterior and posterior capsular cataract second polar cataract This in turn divided into anterior and posterior. Third we have congenital nuclear cataract. In this congenital nuclear cataract we have zonular cataract. Second total nuclear cataract third it is sutural and axial cataracts fourth we have generalized cataract so in this generalized cataract which in turn have blue dot cataract 
second it can be total congenital cataract next it is congenital membranous cataract so we will see one or two points for each of these so this anterior cataracts both anterior capsular cataract and anterior polar cataract these both are visually insignificant that is it does not affect the vision that much of, uh, it does not affect the vision that much okay next is posterior capsular cataract it is very rare and it is mainly associated with persistent hyaloid artery remnant okay next is posterior polar cataract this is also very common uh, less uh, lens anomaly it is mainly associated with a persistent hyaloid artery remnant second it is associated it can be associated with posterior lenticonus third it can be associated with persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous okay this is about the posterior polar cataract next we'll see about the nuclear cataract first is zonular cataract this is zonular cataract it mainly affects a zone of a nucleus so this zonular cataract mainly affects with the zone of fetal nucleus is getting affected in this second the main mass of the lens internal and external to the uh, zone of cataract will be clear so internal and external to the cataract will be clear like this and this okay but as, uh, except for the small linear opacities like the spokes of it that is called as the riders this is the zonular cataract it can be due to genetic or environmental origin hmm? next we have total nuclear cataract this total nuclear cataract it involves both embryonic nucleus and fetal nucleus are being involved in this total nuclear cataract okay next is the generalized cataract first is blue dot cataract in this blue dot cataract as the name suggests there will be a punctate opacities in the peripheries uh, in the uh, adolescent nucleus it is more, mainly a developmental cataract there will be a punctate opacities in the peripheral part of adolescent nucleus okay Next this total congenital cataract it is a very common type it can be either unilateral or bilateral it is mainly of uh, mainly due to a hereditary character or it can be due to maternal rubella syndrome also or that is mean congenital rubella syndrome next is congenital membranous cataract this occurs due to total or partial absorption of the congenital cataract that is leaving behind a thin membrane that is called as congenital membranous cataract there will be a partial or total absorption of congenital cataract leaving behind a thin membrane okay that is called as congenital membranous cataract so these are the types of uh, congenital cataract okay next we will look into the etiology of the congenital cataracts in this etiology first we have the genetic one
first is the simple mendelian inheritance the simple mendelian inheritance can be autosomal dominant autosomal recessive or it can be x linked second it or it can be due to major chromosomal defects major chromosomal defects can be trisomies or turner syndrome third it can be due to inborn error of metabolism so inborn error of metabolism we have galactosemia homocystinuria refsum disease a beta lipoproteinemia fourth it can be due to congenital infections that is torch infections okay in congenital infections we have toxoplasmosis cmv syphilis rubella and varicella fifth it can be associated with other syndromes the syndromes i i will write it in alphabetical order first for a it is alport b you don't have anything c it can be crozen syndrome d is down syndrome e it can be due to ectodermal dysplasia f it can be febri disease g is galactosemia h hypoparathyroidism i it can be incontinenta pigmentae l is lowy syndrome m marfan and uh, myotonic dystrophy yan you don't have m n o p l the next t is trisomies trisomy can be 13 and 15 okay so these are the etiology of the congenital cataract this congenital cataract can be stationary or progressive so congenital cataract it can be stationary or progressive depending on their type so they should be followed up till 5 years of age so what are the clinical features the child can have in this they can have a blurry vision or poor vision there can be blurred vision or it can be a poor vision second they have a leukocoria that is loss of red reflex they can be nystagmus fourth strabismus they can also have photophobia they can have delayed development of other milestones delayed development of other milestones then other uh, in syndromic uh, child they can have other features associated with that syndrome hmm? next we'll go on to the treatment so in treatment the basic principle is the cataract that interferes with the vision significantly needs treatment so cataract that interferes 
with the vision significantly needs treatment visually insignificant cataract needs to be monitored for the development of amblyopia so visually insignificant that is like anterior capsular and anterior polar cataracts okay visually insignificant cataract needs to be monitored for the development of amblyopia okay so the removal of so you you're going for a and there is a cataract is visually insignificant i mean significant you will go for the removal of the lens so removal of the lens material to provide an optically clear optically clear visual access to be provided it is to provide a optically clear visual access so correction of resultant so when you remove the lens you will it will result in a aphakic uh, refractory error that is they don't have lens it is called aphakia it results in aphakic refractory error so correction or options for correction of refractory error so options for the correction of refractory error can be you can give spectacles to the child if suppose it can if spectacles the child cannot wear face spectacles contact lens can be provided third is intraocular lens that is surgery for the children more than or equal to 2 years of age so the child is more than 2 years you have to do a surgery that is intraocular lens can be placed so persistent am if the child develop a persistent amblyopia is the most common cause for poor recovery hmm? so this is about congenital cataract we'll see some uh, small additional points to this so the dense cataract that is found at the time of the birth so dense cataract sorry dense cataract that is found at the time of birth it is an emergency okay for a clear visual axis is essential for developmental and maturation of visual system so if focused image is not formed by 6 to 8 weeks of age there will be a permanent visual impairment due to uh, amblyopia okay so clear visual axis is essential for development and maturation of visual system if the focused image is not formed by 6 to 8 weeks of age it leads to permanent visual impairment this permanent visual impairment is due to amblyopia